The Premier respects the processes. The Premier respects the institutions, Mr Speaker. Queensland's integrity system has been under intense scrutiny after a series of politically damaging events. That's, that's absurd. I reject it. The resignations of two of the state's highest serving integrity officers at the start of the year were followed by a reported spike in political lobbying and criticisms from former high-ranking public servants. The checks and balances are not working. After weeks of dismissing calls for a commission of inquiry, in late February, Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk announced an independent review of Queensland public sector culture. I acknowledge we can always do better. I have said that time and time again. And I pride myself in integrity and transparency in government. That review by Professor Peter Coldrake is titled Let the Sunshine In and reveals a public service at times cowled by politics. It lays out a blueprint for what would be the most significant changes since the Fitzgerald reforms 30 years ago. Peter Coldrake, you've spent months speaking to people in government, you've had hundreds of meetings, you've received a lot of confidential information. Is there really an integrity crisis in Queensland? And if so, how bad is it? Uh, we've got a, an integrity system here which is ma mature, um, but there has been a sufficient amount of noise that it was appropriate for there to be a good look at it. But did you find any evidence of illegality or improper use of power? And if you didn't, why is there a problem? There is a, a pattern of poor behaviour, some of the examples of which have been um, talked about for a number of months. Um, and they are not universal. There can be a, a poor set of behaviours between ministerial staff and between public servants. Now, these are matters that are not confined to this government. These are matters that, are, that can happen in any organisation. And a healthy organisation is one in which people are, are not frightened to give their frank advice, not frightened to, um, to come forward, and that there is not a price to be paid for doing so. The report proposes a radical change to the business of Queensland government lobbying, much of it conducted through two firms run by former Labor Party officials. Professor Coldrake has recommended a ban on what he calls dual hatting, political campaigners who become lobbyists after an election. You've described the regulation of lobbyists here in Queensland as a market failure. What do you mean by that? Well, well, interestingly, Queensland's got quite a, a strong uh, lobbyist system compared to many other jurisdictions. Issues around lobbying have been around for a long period of time and they're absolutely out of control in the American Congress. But it, I think it's, it's an appropriate area to focus on. Are they out of control here in Queensland? Well, I think the boundary lines have got to be clear. Professor Coldrake has also called for what would be an Australian first. All cabinet decisions, with few exceptions, to be published within 30 days. Together with other recommendations, such as boosting the power of the Auditor General and more secure tenure for senior public servants, the aim is to change Queensland's public sector culture. What we're talking about is tone and conduct. And tone at the top is very important. In any organisation, it's certainly important in government. We're now in a third term government in Queensland. There's been no regime change since 2015. To what extent are the problems in public sector culture that you've identified a result of having a government in power for so long? Well, the general history of Queensland, as you know, is we've always had long periods of government, or mostly. The point I would make is this, that when governments have been around, whether they be of the left or the right, um, if they've been around for a while, it's important that they keep themselves refreshed. Um, the first mistake is if in any organisation, um, you know, you put up the shutters and you don't want to listen. The Queensland Government will be issuing some big contracts soon in the lead up to the 2032 Olympics. How real are the corruption risks if Queensland just continues with business as usual? Um, I think that um, when you've got major events like, uh, like the Olympics, of course it draws, a, a draws attention to the issues and uh, there will be a vast amount of taxpayer money associated with an initiative like this, as there is indeed, by the way, when you have major floods and recovery programs and so on. But the, the concern I have about 
and that many people have about what's happened in public services generally, including in Queensland, is when government itself loses the, in, the internal capacity to deal with some of these issues. And the temptation over the years on both sides of politics in Australia has been that certain functions are removed from government. But government needs the capacity to oversight that activity. And large contracts is a very good case in point. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.